Now, hi there. Back again. Um, I've been going through my own testings lately, and it seems they are around money. Very interesting. So, uh, the one thing that's good about them, oh dear, we get offline. Okay. The one thing that's good about them is that they show us to ourself. And so, um, you know, you find new pockets of fear. And what can you do but look at them? And in the looking, a lot of it disappears. Just to become aware of things. It's amazing how very powerful it is. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to get into your head and argue with yourself or even listen to anything your head has to say. And uh, it's pretty neat. And it, two, these things show us where we are too identified with the role we're playing, with the whole 3D, the chimera. Um, it's very real on the one hand. On the other hand, it's nothing but an illusion. And so balance is my way, you know, to play it best. Let integrity rule. And right decisions will be made. Right choices will just happen. And you'll just get to be the witness to them. You'll see them passing through. All right, what brings me here? Um, it's the 6th of November and we have a lot of things going on and there's an awful lot circulating about the 11 11 11 date upcoming and a lot of it breeds fear um, you know people are, are, are just talking about all kinds of things Ellen and didn't pan out, and so now there's why you something or another. Um, it, it, at every turn, the media is not worth listening to. You know, they just breed fear and discomfort and commercialism, of course. That's their main goal. All right, so why am I here? Well, uh, not too long ago, I also came out and said, in addition to the incremental changes that we've been going through for a number of years now that are getting more and more intense, um, it, it sometimes it seems like you don't see how they could get more intense. And, and then you wake up the next day and you see how they could. So, um, and a lot of it isn't necessarily actions happening around you. It's just sensing. It's just feeling. It's just, um, you know, your sleep patterns are interrupted. You feel energies running around in your body and strange pains here and there, and you're sleeping maybe over much or maybe not at all, or maybe a little of both, you know, going back and forth. And so change has been happening. But I did come out and say, um, I do also believe it's possible that there will be a moment in which a massive change will be made. Now, I'm not one to put my mind to these things. I really don't, I, I make it a practice not to listen to most of it because when I do go listen to a video, I won't stick with it. I won't finish it if it uh, has anything of fear in it. Um, I don't want to participate in that. And I'm aware that being in this 3D skin suit, you know, being human like everyone else, the body itself can be made to fear, independent of the being that lives within it. And so then you've got that to deal with. There are all different kinds and levels of fear. And just like it's important to choose your friends and associates carefully because their vibration affects you, it's also important to choose what you watch and what you listen to with some care. Um, no matter how strong a being you are, your body can be made to fear. And so, anyway, 
Um, so I'm not totally informed about all of the stuff that's going on, but I want to say this. Let's just pretend for a moment. Let's just pretend that maybe 1111 is a special date. It's a big date. Maybe this uh, photon belt thing will come into some kind of a fruition on that date maybe, or, or the gravity wave, whatever they're calling it, maybe, 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 what the heck ever. All right, whether it's 11-11, 12-21, or, you know, it happens in 22-22, whatever, whenever something like this will come on us, I just want to let you know what my strategy is. And uh, the biggest thing is to stay in high vibration and to find peace in the midst of it. And we can do this. We really can. Someone recently sent me a very beautiful artist's rendition. Um, I'll see if I can't tack the picture on at the end of this video. Of uh, 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 Just a, a light-filled vista of nature where the colors are rainbow-like and beautiful and there's a young woman in a long flowing dress with a staff getting ready to walk over a bridge that's so full of light it's glowing. Well, maybe that's what we're doing. We're getting ready to cross a bridge, a light bridge, into a higher density or dimension. Now, the way we do this is to stay 100% out of fear. We don't imagine terrible scenarios. Uh, that's using our mind to play with us, to mess with us, to hex us. And to, it's just so obvious, folks. They want to keep us in lower vibration. So that's anxiety, that's fear, that's, oh my God, you know, have I got the survival supplies all put together. Okay, it's good, you know, it's good to have a certain uh, level of preparedness in general for any kind of an emergency. I like to be set up to where for 30 days I could exist. I have water, I have dry goods, uh, oatmeal and things like that, you know, will go a very long way. And powders and tinctures and different things to add nutrition to it. Um, I have some seeds, should I need to grow things? I mean, a basic level of preparedness is great. Go buy yourself an extra 30 or 40 or 50 gallon trash can, the outdoor kind, and fill it with water. Put a cap full of Clorox in it to keep it from developing, you know, little green swimmies that want to live in there. Seal it up, and in the event of a massive electricity outage or whatever, we need water. Uh, and you would be prepared. And it's comforting. It's, it's just comforting. The Boy Scouts have it right. Be prepared. Boy and Girl Scouts. The Scouts have it right. And so all of those things are good. But ultimately, it's time to dive down deep inside. It's time to get acquainted with your point of peace. And you'll find it in your now moment. Okay? And you have to be out of mind to be in the now. Because the mind has nothing but past and future to offer you. It's, it's not a good occupant of the now. It, it just isn't. And you can say be in the now. You can say be in heart. I think I'm switching to be in the now. Be in this moment. Just in this present moment. When you're there you'll know, you'll begin to feel it, that it, it courses through you, or you through, I, I don't know, I don't have a lot of words, you know, for this, but there is a sense of peace, it's a mindless peace, it's like, it wouldn't matter if the world blew up 10 seconds from now, this peace would still hold, it is impenetrable. So there's a peace and there's a joy there too. Uh, it's got kind of a soft vibration and we're not used to being in joy and so at first we might not recognize it. 
um, I didn't notice it for a while. I, I considered myself a normally fairly happy person. Uh, but finding this space within, you link up and connect up with, th there's a power here. It's untouchable by outer circumstance. And that's really important because we do, we get identified with the part that we're playing, with the mask we have on. Mine is called Teresa Ann. Okay, it's a mask. It's not me. And even in the body being here, the Teresa Ann, what do we have? 10% or less use of our brain? The conscious mind is just a very small portion. So it's minuscule. We can't go by any activity, anything here in 3D, any kind of performance, any kind of anything, because we're barely here. The fullness of us. This is the fringes. We're on the fringes of who and what we are when we're in these bodies. It's just that these bodies offer us some of the most phenomenal, fantastic opportunities. Uh, and, you know, it's got to be pretty spectacular in order to get us into the soup that we're in here and the kind of things that are out playing now. Um, 3D Earth right now is extraordinarily a difficult place to be. I mean, it could always be worse, folks. Don't ever say things like it couldn't get worse. You hex yourself when you do that. Let's start watching our words. The things that we say casually, words aren't casual. They are not. Everything said in the presence of a child up to about age seven goes in deeply as programming into the subconscious because they're, they're not in beta brain waves yet. And it's like the hypnotist is working with you and your conscious mind is set aside. The beta brain waves aren't operative. And so you don't have the guard of the conscience or the guard of the uh, making judgments about what you'll accept and what you don't. The subconscious takes everything it hears at face value. It takes it literally. So your literal words, it takes as a command, which it tries to produce for you. All right. Remember, everything about life, basically, we've been lied to here. And we're waking up from that now. But it goes deeper, way deeper than we know. I don't know, but just the littlest part of it. But I've seen this. Just in our use of the language, we have all kinds of colloquialisms and, and sayings and just mannerisms of speech that I suggest watch and observe as appropriate and start cleaning it up. But back to the 11th. Okay, so let's say something big was to happen on this or any other date. What to do? Meditate. Sing a song. Be in peace. I'm going to get my beautiful art image out and just kind of pour myself into that and spend a bit of time visualizing the new world that I want to see where all animals and man and all beings of every kind, insects, everything, interact only based on love, appreciation, and respect. Everybody and everything has ultimate respect for the rest. That's a new world for sure. And it's one that our hearts and our souls and our deepest parts are yearning for. We're tired of this. We're tired of the harshness that we're surrounded with here. So I just wanted to share that in the event things begin to go kind of crazy, um, if you've got a family, if you've got children, maybe set up a plan uh, to have certain music you'll play or games or, or I mean, what good are you going to do running around like a headless chicken, right? What are you going to accomplish there? And you'll take your vibration down. So commune with your inner self. That's my message. 
commune with your inner self and make your decisions. Give just a wee bit of thought, not too much. Please don't get into fear. But give a wee bit of thought about what are the things that make you happiest. Um, you know, maybe make it a party or something. Have some things that you can pull out of the closet, some music you can put on. Um, you know, uh, assuming there's electricity, a show you might like to watch, you can always have a battery powered DVD thing or something. I don't know. Just give some thought. And at some point, what if we have three days of darkness that's been prophesied for centuries? Whether it be pole shifting or who knows what, it doesn't matter. In that event, what I've heard is stay indoors is the best thing to do. Just stay inside. I'm going to close all the windows and close all the blinds and just be and follow the same idea. Be in joy. Be at peace. Contact and commune with the highest levels of self that you can find. And let me tell you something. We have star brothers and sisters our brethren, our families, our friends on the other side, don't you think they'll be sending support? Don't you think we'll have phenomenal support? But we've got to cooperate. We have to do our part. They cannot come down and pick us up. We have to lift ourselves up. And as part of lifting ourselves up, that is a signal, a free will signal that gives them the right to enter in. You could even say prayer if that's your way. You could even invite benevolent help. Be careful how you word things. There's something very strange about words. They're, they have to be very exact. And I don't totally understand this at this point, but I've seen enough to say that's how it works for whatever reason. So let's, let's take a clue from that, you know? And, and continue to shine and shine as brightly as we possibly can and be aware you in doing this, the, the small group of people that I reach with this video, you in doing this will uplift your brethren to a tremendous level. You will provide the steadying light the vibration, the frequency that will bring the calm that so many will need. Now, before I leave this, we're all telepathic, my friends. Uh, I don't know if you've been doing the watch and observe thing and, and noticed we're all picking up one another's thoughts all the time. I think there's a very good possibility that there's not such a thing as your mind and my mind. There's just mind and its thoughts and we all contribute. I don't know, just a theory at this point. But one thing is a fact that wherever a mass of people are feeling any kind of intense emotion, you are going to be affected by that. You are going to pick that up. And so it pays to realize that there will be a lot of people in fear. It's uh, the body's natural response, and it's the way we've been programmed to respond to things. So realize, too, that if you feel waves of fear coming over you, center down. That's not you. You can reject it. You can reject it. But if you look at the fear and you say, well, I'm experiencing it, so it must be mine, you just claimed it. And that makes it much harder to deal with. So don't claim any kind of fear. Don't claim any kind of anything that's negative. It's not necessarily yours to begin with. For all we know, there may be beings of light, angels or something, that take these energies and try to help settle them out and even them out across the planet. And maybe they funnel more of the difficult energies into the aura of the light being because they know the light being can neutralize that. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm saying it's possible. 
All right. I mean, put yourself in their shoes. Put yourself in the shoes, if they wear them, of higher dimensional beings that are also the guardians or caretakers of this dimension and this planet and us. What would they be doing? How would they be doing it? How are the beings serving Gaia? Now, if you're a light being, you're a part of the vanguard, and you've already been dealing with energies that are more than your own. So realize, my friends, that even if you do feel waves of fear, disidentify. Check it out. You may find that you can immediately reject it, and it's gone because you were just tuning in. You were just picking it up. It's not even yours. Okay? I hope this is useful. I hope it's helpful. I don't really like making a video like this because in its own way, it panders to the fear too. But, you know, maybe it's the elephant in the room and, and maybe it's good to just acknowledge it and do my best to give my best gift to get this out there. I'm basically just sharing with you uh, what my practice is and what my plans are for such a thing. So, be at peace and God bless.